Hello, everybody. So as promised, we have to cover differential equations and their numerical solutions in this course. That might strike some fear into your heart. And I, I want to say right now, don't worry about it. Um, I know that not everybody has the background in differential equations. Most of you do, and a lot of you love them. So like, that's great and all. Um, but you're going to have everything you need, uh, even if you don't have that background. This lecture is designed to get you right up to speed with a few of the very basic things and everything that you'll need to be able to understand, follow along, and uh, be on the same sort of footing. Don't worry, having a past in differential equations doesn't give you much of a leg up um, in this course. Uh, that being said, if you do have a background in differential equations, you might want to go and read up on some of those basics and, and refresh your memory a little bit before we get into this topic. So, um, yeah, just a few a few slides here, a few pages of our notes, and that should be able to give us the background we need. So why don't we get to it? And uh, yeah, so numerical solutions to initial value problems. Initial value problems, you may or may not remember, um, are basically a, a differential equation paired with an initial condition. But I'll talk about what those things are as we go. So, okay, one major area of mathematics where numerical methods come in very handy is in solving differential equations. All right, so I, I thought, you know, it's not so great to just jump right into this without explaining what's going on or, you know, talking a little bit about graphs and stuff to, um, I don't know, justify some of what we do. Because I could give you, you know, a scheme that does a particular technique and say, you know, use the scheme, but I really want you to understand it and I want you to understand why it might work and so on. I, I think that it doesn't take too long to get there. Okay, so for those of you who have never studied this topic before, don't worry. There's going to be enough here that um, uh, you'll be just fine. So here, what is a differential equation? Let's let's start out with that. A differential equation, or, or DE, as we'll often say, is an equation that contains derivatives. A first order DE only contains first derivatives, and that's what we're going to be working with here. So some examples of differential equations are, here we have dy by dx equals 3y. Uh, so what this is really saying is that the derivative of a function, y of x, is equal to 3 times what that function is itself, 3 times the y. Um, so your goal, if you're trying to solve this thing, is figuring out what the y is that fits, fits this in. y is a function here, so I need to be able to sub it in for the y, as well as its derivative would go on the left-hand side, and the two would have to match. So it's a little bit different in that you're not really finding a, a value of y that works. Like, it's, y is not a number, it's a function. And that's a difference, right? dy by dt plus y equals ln of t is another example. Or u prime equals, here's a function of the, the what we call the dependent variable, the u, and the t, the independent variable, what u depends on. So a few different examples of first-order differential equations right here. And as I sort of mentioned before, solving a DE means finding which function satisfies the relationship defined by that DE. And any differential equation that we look at has an infinite number, so infinitely many solutions. So here's a really simple example. Y prime minus Y equals zero. That's saying I want to figure out the functions Y of T so that when I take their derivative, and I subtract the original function away from that derivative, I get the zero function. And if you want to think about that, if my y of t was an exponential, like e to the t, the derivative of e to the t is e to the t. So if I were to substitute in y equals e to the t, then y prime is also e to the t, and I would get e to the t minus e to the t equals the zero function all the time. So y equals e to the t is a solution to this thing. But as a matter of fact, y equals any constant times e to the t also works. Choose your favorite constant. Stick a, a 7 in front of that, right? 7e to the t has a derivative of 7e to the t. And so when I sub substitute in 7e to the t in the equation, I get that left side is equal to right side. And it's true for any constant in front of e to the t, including 0. So that ensures, right, having this as a solution ensures that when I substitute any constant times e to the t into the equation, I get left side equals right side. That's what makes it a solution. 
okay? Uh, I'm, in general, not going to be asking you to, um, to find solutions to these things. That's what a differential equations course is all about. But I might ask you, and we're going to talk a lot about this, uh, our ability to numerically approximate these solutions. So maybe we don't know how to actually find a solution to a function. That's fine, because maybe you don't have uh, Math 2270, our differential equations course, in your back pocket. That's okay. You're going to be able to estimate what those solutions should be. Um, anyway, what do these look like? Well, a differential equation is going to come with all kinds of solutions. There's an infinite number here, one for each value of c. And if I draw them out, well, e to the e to the t itself would be the function that goes through 0, 1, and then 1, 2.7, something like this, and has an exponential shape. So it's going to be something. This is not going to be perfect, but I'll do my darndest. That was actually really good. That would be e to the t, but that's only one solution. And there's actually an infinite number because it's any constant times that which would serve as like a stretch factor. So if I had two e to the t, that's gonna go through this point. It's gonna be twice as high here. It's gonna be twice as high here. It's gonna be twice as high here. And it's gonna be a curve that follows a path that is always twice as high as the first one that we drew. <clears throat> and there's gonna be all sorts of them, right? There's gonna be uh, like the one that's, I don't know, a, a quarter e to the t is gonna be one fourth as high as the first one that we drew. And then there's all the negative multiples as well. There are gonna be curves that look like this. I'm gonna do a little bit more of a hatchet job here to, to get things moving. But essentially you can see the infinite number of, of curves. Y equals zero is its own solution because if I sub in the zero function, the zero function is the derivative of the zero and zero minus zero is zero. So left side equals right side. So as a matter of fact, this solution right here, oops, it's supposed to be a constant solution. I'll do my best. There we go. That is also a solution. You see, we have an infinite number of solutions and they span this, right? Like every point of this plane, there's a solution that passes through it as a matter of fact. There's just, what, seven solutions that we drew out and they kind of fan out in this kind of way. All right, that's what the solutions look like on a graph. We're not gonna be directly using this, okay? But I want you to know that we're gonna be using some of the concepts around this as we go to form our solutions, uh, our numerical solutions, because we, ha we have to use the fact that there are gonna be solutions all over the place in our, um, what we call a direction field here, a graph of the solutions. So we'll be referring back to this kind of thing in a little bit. But I said that we wanted to talk about initial value problems, and that actually takes the concept of differential equations and adds one extra aspect. A differential equation can be paired with an initial condition. And what an initial condition does is it narrows down the infinite number of solutions to just one. So a differential equation coupled with an initial condition is called an initial value problem. Okay. So we saw in that last example, because I told you what the solutions would be, right? This differential equation has a solution of c e to the t, and I hope you can see why, because I can sub that in, get left side equals right side. Suppose this was paired with an extra condition that says y of zero equals four. Okay, so suppose I have a differential equation that is what, what I said, but I also have an initial condition of y of zero equals four. Well, I can figure out exactly what solution I need from that um, by substituting it into our solution, right? What the effect of this is, as I said, was that it narrows down the infinite number of solutions to just one. So while we have y equals c e to the t, this is an infinite number of solutions, one for every single value of c, I can narrow that down to a single solution by applying the initial condition. So check this out. If we have, if we have y equals c e to the t and y of zero equals four, apply this condition to get, well, look, this is a function of t, right? So I can 
I can plug in this initial condition and I get y of zero, which is supposed to be four, is equal to c e to the zero. Well, e to the zero is just one. Uh, whoops, so I get four equals c times one or c equals four. And see, by applying this initial, initial condition, I figure out exactly what value of c this is. And now I don't have an infinite number of solutions. I have a single solution of y equals 4e to the t. So I'm going to write that down. We get a single solution. And that solution is y equals 4e to the t. And I want to, to just revisit the graphs on the last page um, because this last tip is kind of referring to that. An initial value problem in IVP does nothing more than pick out one single curve from the plot on the last page. Okay, so if we go back to that, if we go back to this, this was, this graph right here represents all solutions. An initial value problem takes the one solution that goes through, well, this point, right? Suppose that's the point, um, uh, the zero, four, right? At t equals zero, the y is equal to four. And so essentially by applying that initial condition, I'm narrowing down that infinite number of solutions to the single curve that goes through that spot. So the blue curve, is the single curve that does that trick, if that one's the one that goes through the point zero four. Um, the analogy that I really like to use is food-based because all the best analogies are food-based. I want you to think of the general solution, the general solution, the solution to the differential equation before, to be like a plate of spaghetti. And the solution to an initial value problem is therefore like a single noodle out of that plate of spaghetti the single noodle that goes through the right point, okay? So we have a whole plate of spaghetti as the solution to a differential equation. The solution to an initial value problem is when we narrow down that whole plate of spaghetti to a single uh, piece of pasta. And hopefully that's a delicious one indeed. Okay, so that's kind of what's going on with the basics of differential equations. You have a, a differential equation, it is an infinite number of solutions, initial value problems, narrow that down, okay? Our goal, our goal with these are not going to be, are not going to be finding explicit solutions in a beautiful form. That's what differential equations is as a class. And if you're interested in learning more, you should take it. It's a great course. Our goal here though, is to do something different. It's to approximate the solution to an initial value problem if you're given a DE and an initial condition. There are lots of reasons that you might take this approach instead of solving directly. So the DE, you know, it might require a complicated and difficult or tedious solution method. We saw a few of those last semester if you took that course, but there are some differential equations that are pretty tough to solve. There are other differential equations where you can't actually represent the solution in a closed form. It might require integrations and so on that can't be represented using everyday functions so that the solutions would be literally very hard to write down. So maybe in that situation, you're interested in some sort of approximating technique. Um, the last one's sort of a joke, but maybe the mathematician doesn't remember how to do differential equations in the first place. But uh, basically, we're going to be taking uh, so a simple approach to start, one that I think will make a lot of sense given the, the graphs that I've drawn already, and then we'll be working toward more sophisticated approaches. So um, I think that's where we're going to leave this one. Uh, those sophisticated approaches can get pretty tough. So I want you to, to kind of absorb kind of what's going on with basics of differential equations. If you need to do some past review, that's cool, but you don't need to. All right. If you kind of get what's going on with these, and you recognize that I'm never going to ask you for an explicit solution at all, that's cool. That's great. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's where we're going to leave this one. And then we're going to get into our very first method, which is Euler's method in the next video. So um, stay tuned for that. Uh, it should be uh, 
Uh, not too hard to start, but things will scale up quickly. So you're going to want to make sure that that next video uh, makes a lot of sense before you go on and think about uh, tougher things as well. Okay. So um, for now, I wish you the best and um, I hope to see you soon. Bye, everybody.